Right now, it is a time for sports. That means it is time for Mike Cosby. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. I thought you'd be interested in me reading you this story, okay? Uh-oh. Phillies analyst calls the Orioles game an embarrassment to baseball. And uh, NBC Sports Philadelphia analyst and former Major League Baseball reliever Ricky uh, Botolico. Well, he was covering Bolico. the game. Bolico. Yeah, Bolico. Following the Bolico. Come yeah. on, let's go. All right, Bolico. Following, I'll, the, fo- I'll go ahead. Fo- following the Phillies' 10-9 loss in which a pop-up gaff and an inside-the-park home run headlined the defeat, he didn't hold back. Quote, they didn't deserve to win the game. They deserve to lose the game. You don't feel sorry for bonehead plays on the field. I don't know how you felt, but I felt embarrassed by a lot of these players out there. I thought this game was an embarrassment to baseball. I felt like the, uh, well, that's, uh, I felt like the bad news bears type of stuff today. That's basically what you've been saying for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, since the beginning. Since, you, since I paid the little attention to it that I have, and it, like I said, it doesn't matter who you're watching, it's, it's there. It's, it's, it's an embarrassment. And they're using the excuse of um, the lack of a spring training or whatever you want to say, but in my book, this is the professional ranks. You don't need all that. I went and watched some baseball yesterday in Staten Island. It was a, a 17U tournament, and these kids were hitting and making plays like it was normal for them. If 17-year-old kids can do it consistently, why can't the pros? Yeah. And it's not, just, it's not just the plays. It's the fundamentals. It, there, there, there are no fundamentals in the major leagues. It's an unwatchable product. You know, you could blame it on the, the, the season that they're having or whatever, but it, it's been evident through baseball for the last few years and this year, it's even more evident. It, there, there's no fundamentals in baseball, and these guys play like they don't care. All right. In other sports news, uh, in hockey, lots to go on. The Islanders beat the Capitals. Good game. I mean, I got home from Staten Island to watch the game, and uh, I got home. It was the second period, and the Islanders were losing 2 nothing. And then uh, close to the end of the second period, I think it was within the last minute, the Islanders pumped one in. And they came out at the start of the third period and put another one in in the first minute, making it 2-2 real quick. And then before you knew it, um, the Caps got another power play, one of, I think, nine on the day. And, by the way, both power play goals were the goals that the uh, Capitals scored. So it was uh, a little bit of home cooking, it looks like, uh, uh, away from home for the Capitals yesterday. But on that subsequent power play, the Islanders scored a shorty, making it 3-2. So they went down from being down 2 nothing to up 3-2, uh, scored another even-strength goal at 4-2, and uh, they whacked the Caps yesterday, beating them 4-2 in the first game of their seven-game series, and a big win for the Islanders yesterday. Um, the Bruins beat the Hurricanes yesterday 4-3 in double overtime. Uh, the Avalanche shut out the Coyotes 3 nothing. The Flyers, in another good game, beat the Canadians 2-1. And in an upset in the last game of the day, Vancouver beat the reigning champion St. Louis Blues 5-2. So that's the beautiful thing about hockey, um, the, the unpredictability of it. Um, but unlike in baseball being unpredictable because of the lack of skill, hockey is because of the presence of skill. And like you and I have been saying, and we say it over and over again, the best playoffs in all of sports is the Stanley Cup, and hockey's not failing us this year. And if ever it was a year they're going to fail, it would be this, because normally the great thing about the Stanley Cup is they've gone through a rigorous game season, and then they basically, in a shorter period of time, enter the second season, which is just as rigorous, if not tougher, than the first season. That's why I think hockey this year is, is going to be so much even, even better than it has been, because you, they played their schedule. They played, I think they played like 60 games, but they were off for about three or four months. So they got time to rejuvenate themselves. And so these guys are playing on a full tank, not an empty tank. So <clears throat> injuries should be at a minimum because of the wear down on the body. And um, the product is it's there. I mean, it's good goaltending, good playing. Um, you know, people still go with the old school mentality. Oh, it, it's it's boxing on ice. 
Um, those are people that are just fools. that they, they, they don't watch the game and they don't know what they're talking about. But um, to me, it's the only watchable sport right now uh, out of all of them, and I'm watching it. And the only, time I, the only time I flip to baseball to see what's going on is between periods. And uh, with the Mets yesterday, between periods, I flipped it on, and Familia was pitching in the fifth inning. <laughs> don't know the situation, don't know anything about what was going on or why, but um, the Mets won last night, so I, I guess it worked. So... <laughs> We'll see what happens. The Mets won last night and the Yankees won last night. But when you look at baseball, just because we are talking sports, so we got to talk about it. When you look at baseball, the Orioles are only two games behind the Yankees. Yeah. That kind of like says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it's because a... the Orioles were a team they didn't expect to win 20 games. I think the, the over-under on games won this year for them was like something like 18 and a half. Well, they've only played 16 games, and they won nine. That tells you about the state of baseball. It certainly does. Uh, uh, the Masters uh, won't, have, uh, won't have crowds in November, but then again, that doesn't matter because when you go to watch the Masters, you're under such tight control anyways. <laughs> you, you can't really do anything but stand there. I don't understand why they're not. They're, it's, it's out on an open golf course. You can have people there. You can limit it. I, I don't understand why you can't have people there. I really don't. I, I, I yeah, it, it, because they don't want to limit the crowd. That's why. And and, and, and so limit crazy. the crowd. Yeah. Let it ha have a lottery. Have have two thousand people go. Have yeah. somebody there. Yeah. It's better than having the ridiculous cardboard cutouts they have in baseball, <laughs> where you have fifty thousand seat stadiums and you can't even let five thousand people in. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You can have five thousand people in in any ballpark in in the major leagues. And, and they can projectile vomit and not hit each other. There's so much room. <laughs> I don't understand why, they, why they're not having it. To me, there's more involved, but that's another story for another time. Golf with the big open there and, and the enormity of a golf course, you can have people. I don't understand why they don't. All right. Um, how about the racing today? And how about yeah, racing yesterday? You hit yesterday, we right? We did yesterday, yeah. Well, we won yesterday, and we had a, a 9-2 to two shot, paid $11 and change, and, and won pretty convincingly. So um, today we're going to come back, and it's going to be the ninth race, um, seven furlongs on the dirt, because I don't know about these storms. Got hit with one yesterday in Staten Island. I never know when they're going to pop up. Um, there's only six horses going to post, but if you look at the race, at least four of the six are going to show speed, so that tells me pick the closer, and the closer for me is the three-horse, Miss Orb, trained by Mike Missielli, um, came back off of a little bit of a layoff to run back at, at Belmont, going a mile distance in June. Um, this horse came from last to miss by a neck, uh, miss by a nose, running second to Radzikowski, who is in this race and is the favorite from the rail. But like I said, there's more speed in this race, and uh, I think it sets up pretty good for Miss Orb. And uh, Miss Orb's morning line is 6-1. to one. So uh, we could be looking at another $11 horse today. So it's the ninth race today. The three-horse Miss Orb is the pickup at Saratoga. All right, Mike. We'll check with you manana. Yeah, hockey today. Hockey all day. It's a good thing about not being in school right now. You got, I got hockey from like uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon to midnight. Beautiful. <laughs> Enjoy it. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Take care. Mike Kazi with the Check on Sports uh, this morning here on The Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio.